Hi, my name is Simon Breen, and I'm the Education Director for the Escondido Creek Conservancy. And I'm here today to talk about watersheds. So what is a watershed? Well, when a drop of rain falls from the sky, it's going to hit a surface. Let's say, for example, it hits the top of a mountain. Where is it going to go? Well, it's going to shed from the top of that mountain, down the slope, into a creek or a river, and out to the ocean. And that's really what a watershed is. But it's not just how water sheds off the topography and into the waterways into the ocean. It's also everything you find in that system. So it includes things like the plants and the animals. It includes the buildings, the vehicles, and the people. And it also includes some of the things that the people add to the environment that might not be so good for a watershed. So take a moment, pause for just a moment, and think about some of those things that might be bad that humans add to the environment. So hopefully some of the things you thought about are the things that we're going to show you. One thing that humans add to the environment that's not great for a watershed, in the farm, we have pesticides. And farmers will spray that to kill things like pests, maybe some rodents, but it can cause some damage to the watershed and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, not only do people add pesticides to farms, but some of us might add pesticides in our home gardens. If you're trying to keep those tomatoes nice and whole without any bug bites, you might put them in your backyard. Okay. Another thing in the farm that we might add is fertilizer. If we want to make our tomatoes nice and big, add a little bit of fertilizer to that. And maybe grandma wants to add some fertilizer to her tomatoes in the backyard. So we'll add some there too. Okay. Another thing that humans might add to the environment that might not be great. Let's think about vehicles. So yes, they, they emit carbon and things like that, but sometimes they also drip a little bit of oil. So we're going to add a little bit of oil drip to some of our vehicles here. All right. Now going back to the farm and to the gardens, um, you, if you have crops, you have to tend the fields, you have to plow the fields, and that creates a lot of green waste. So over here at the farm we're going to sprinkle some green waste and in the backyards we have people who are mowing their lawns and clipping their hedges and that creates some green waste too. Okay over here in this mountainside you can see that it's a little bit dirty. So it looks like they stripped away all of their plants and now there's this loose soil that I'm going to sprinkle on. And at the farm, also lots of loose soil when they plow those fields. Um, one of the things that we might have in the watershed that comes from not humans, but animals, would be things like um, manure from cows. So I'm going to put some manure in the farm and we love our pets, and when we walk our pets, our pets have to do their business. So we're going to put some dog business. Now I know you're responsible and you pick up after your dog, but not everybody does. So we're going to put some of those dog duties there. All right. And the last thing is trash. So some people are not responsible and they throw trash. So I have some little bits of plastic here to represent our trash. I'm just going to sprinkle that where, where people usually litter. So sometimes people throw trash out of their window. Sometimes maybe a garbage truck 
had some trash that spilled out, so I'll put some in the neighborhood. All right. Now, all of this stuff is in the watershed, but right now it's just sitting where it fell. And it doesn't look like it's doing a lot of harm, but we're going to find out what happens after a big rainstorm. Okay, so here comes the rain. Ready, set, rain. So, remember how clean that water was before the rain? Now look at it. So it is filthy. It's, it's got all these things that we talked about. So you'll notice floating inside here, you'll notice some of the green waste. And you might think, well, why is that green waste bad? Well, for one, that can create a lot of turbidity in the water. It can mud up the water a bit. If you're a fish and you're trying to swim and there's a bunch of green waste that gets in there, that's not great for you. But also, a lot of that green waste has that fertilizer on it that we talked about. And the fertilizer can cause some algal blooms, which um, can create red tides and cause all kinds of problems for marine life. Another thing you'll notice in, this, in the ocean now is the litter. And this is really sad because this litter can hurt a lot of animals, and it's not great for people either. So, sea turtles eat jellyfish, and plastic bags look like jellyfish. And a turtle doesn't expect there to be plastic, it doesn't know anything about plastic. So if it sees something that looks like a jellyfish, it thinks it must be a jellyfish, eats it, gets sick. Lots of plastic and litter, when it gets into the ocean, it starts to smell like like, like fish, for example, and other things that live in the ocean. So animals that eat, um, that eat like shellfish, shrimp, they'll see this plastic, they'll think that it is um, food, and they'll eat it and get really sick. Um, we also have in here the pesticide. Now remember, the whole purpose of pesticide is to kill things. And just because it moves from the farm into the water, it doesn't, it doesn't stop killing things. It still has that, that function. So it can kill marine life and it can make us sick too. If it gets into the creek and we swim in that creek, we're exposing ourselves to toxic chemicals. We also have some of the animal wastes that we talked about and that can create bacteria like E. coli that can kill us. If we drink water, that has E. coli in it, it could potentially be fatal for us or it could make us very really sick. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, that oil. Well, we know it's not great for oil to get into water and for the fish that live there and for the deer and other animals that come to the creek to drink, they don't have a choice. They have to drink the water that's there and they can get very sick and we can get sick too if we're recreating and trying to have fun in, in water sources. So in the Escondido Creek watershed, our creek is 26 miles long, and for a portion of that creek, seven miles that run through the city of Escondido, there's concrete. It's not a natural creek anymore. We put this concrete in to prevent flooding, but this has a bad effect because when it rains, it takes all that water, quickly washes it downstream, which is great to prevent flooding, but all this litter and all of these things that we talked about in the watershed that get washed away in the rain, it gets dumped at the end of the, the concrete part of the channel and into the natural part of the channel. And so you can see in this photo here that there's a lot of litter and other types of pollutants that don't show in the photo that are having an impact on long life in our watershed. So I know all of this looks really bad, but the good news is there's a lot that you and I can do to make a difference and keep our watersheds less polluted. So please take a moment, pause the video, and think of some things that you can do to make a difference for our watersheds.
Okay, so I hope you came up with some really great solutions for how to help the watershed. I'm gonna go over a few with you right now. So let's start with the animal waste. So if you have a dog, like I do, every time I go walking, I make sure that I bring dog baths. And if my dog goes to the bathroom, I'm very responsible and I always pick up after her. Not only that, but I try to go one step beyond and take extra bags and I always try to make a point to pick up at least one other dog mess that I encounter just because I know that not everybody is responsible like me. The same thing with trash. Uh, when I'm walking, well for one, I always make sure I throw my trash in the trash can. I make sure that I recycle my recycling uh, plastics that can be recycled, for example, aluminum cans. But I know that not everybody is responsible. So when I walk my dog and I find trash on the ground, I always make a point to pick it up. It's the easiest thing to do. With the pesticide, remember, pesticides are designed to kill things. That's the whole point of them. And when they, they go into the creek and out to the ocean, they're still killing things in their path. So instead of using toxic pesticides that could hurt our deer that are trying to drink out of our creek, hurt our raccoons, hurt all of our wildlife, and hurt us when we try to swim in the, the creeks and the oceans, we can use an organic pesticide. For example, instead of using um, some sort of chemical, you can use something like hot sauce on your tomatoes. That keeps a lot of pests away. You can also put nets over some of your crops so that that keeps birds and other bugs out of it. Um, you can spray some vinegar on there. Things like that, um, they'll keep a lot of a lot of pests away and they'll keep your food healthier to eat too. So green waste was another thing that we talked about. If you mow your lawn, don't just leave it on the side to be washed away into the creeks and the rivers. Uh, pick it up, put it in a green waste bin, and the city will come and dispose of that for you in the proper place. Okay, so another thing that we talked about was loose soil, and a good solution for that is for places like this hillside that don't have any crops and they just have all that dirt there, that dirt's going to roll into the stream or it's going to be washed into the stream. It's going to create a lot of turbidity. It's going to be bad for the fish. They're going to get dirt in their gills. They're not going to be able to see predators. Um, it just reduces the, the water quality. So to prevent that, we can plant cover crops and trees and the roots of those plants will hold that soil in place so when it rains, the dirt won't go anywhere. The farmer can do the same thing. The farmer can put some cover crops on, on this soil here and that'll, that'll prevent the dirt from going into our water. Needs. The last thing is we talked about the vehicles that have um, oil. They could potentially leak oil. One solution to get around that is to take public transportation. So you could ride a bike, you could take a skateboard, you could use a bus or a trolley. Um, if you don't have that option, and not everybody does, you could get a hybrid car or an electric car which relies less on oil or doesn't rely on oil at all. And if you do have to have a car with oil, like a lot of us do, um, just monitor it. And if you notice an oil leak, then get it fixed right away. It's usually not expensive to fix and the longer you leave it, it will cost you money and it will cost a heavy toll to the environment and to our watershed. So those are some simple things that we can all do for a healthier, cleaner watershed. Thank you very much for helping us do our part for the environment.